This one up here. Uh, well, we're in my office, and it's in, that's a nine volt. Thing. It's up on my on my shelf. You don't, you don't want to lose hand. You have to pull pull it out then. I did. Oh, okay. Holy smokes! What? These are fourteens. They get up to. Or, well, this this one's a thirty, a W thirty. They get up to a forty four, W forty four. So that's like forty four inches. The that would be that would be a huge. And we couldn't pop that one out because it went off the. The laser cutter is not that big, but they do get most of the really big sizes like that are not readily available. In fact, nothing above 36, according to this manual, is really available. I it means you could there's specifications for it. You could potentially special order it, but it may take a, a long lead time. It would have to be a real special op application. A lot of very deep beams are usually welded. Special section. They'll be welded together as a um, plate girder. Uh, used to be bolted, but I think they're more technically welded now. So you can get any depth you want, obviously, if you just by welding it. And they do get very deep uh, as ground beams or in lower floors. If you have a, a column coming down in a um, in a multi-story building, and toward the if you want to have an open atrium on the ground. Uh, because I, I just was desperate to get to <laughs> the steel uh, uh, beam selection so that you could go over it in recitation. But now, now with a little more leisure, I think we'll back up and, and look at um, a couple of things. I actually I also added these in this morning so you could get a, a sense of the different uh, sizes. All these... That, that Matthew plotted out are all W sections, uh, wide flange. Um, these used to be, they used to all have nice symbols. I mean, when I was in school, we had to write it like that, you know, a whatever these are, eight by, and this, the wide flange symbol, and the, the uh, other symbol was actually, a, you know, a channel symbol, and I guess the I was just, but when you went to went to uh, <laughs> type something beyond people writing it by hand, uh, the advent of CAD and I guess they could have put those symbols in, but it's really computer uh, limiting things to computer symbols. They kind of standardized it on letters of the alphabet. So this is a wide flange section. This is a um, stands for American Standard, I believe. Th these are the old style. These were from like the beginning of time, back in the 18-something or others. If you go into very old buildings, uh, you'll find them like this. And I think the, the manufacturing process was different. I don't think they were hot rolled. I guess I should, I should go look that up and find out. But they were manufactured in a different way than these. These are uh, m uh, made on, they come out as a, as a start as a as a rectangular uh, red hot billet of steel, and they're passed through a series of rollers that uh, press the section into the shape. I mean, gradually, not just it's not like it goes through one side of rolls and it comes out the shape. It gradually gets worked 
uh, and, and down to the final shape. Uh, so that's hot rolled steel then is what that's called. And it's um, different. The other process that would be used commonly is cold formed. And that you see in very light. I don't have any sections up here of that, but very light gauge uh, steel like in a, you'd commonly see it in, in um, lightweight uh, steel shed kind of construction you know, like a warehouse or something might use um, cold form steel. And they, they have funny shapes like uh, C's that you've probably seen this too, that, that have the return on them. You know, they, they're like that, or they'll be um, uh, a Z shape is a common shape. And they usually have this little, little flange on them, little piece there to stiffen the, the flange because they're very thin. Uh, because they're cold shaped, they'd have to be they're, they're lighter gauge um, to be able to produce them. Uh, anyway, the other uh, rolled sections, this is the American Standard, the older shape, and you can see the, the, uh, the web is quite a bit thicker and these things taper. They're, for a beam, uh, they're not quite as efficient. The, um, these shapes have a very thin web and they concentrate the material right out here in a, in a band and they're, they push that uh, material as far from the neutral axis as you can get essentially which gives it a, it's a very efficient shape then. They're also a little easier maybe to uh, deal with in you know, being able to bolt to this flange or something because it's flat. When you had bolted connections to this, you had, they actually make tapered washers that, that allow you to put a bolt through there because otherwise you can't bolt it, right? The bolt would be crooked on the, on the seat. Uh, these channels you commonly see in, in lighter weight construction. You see them a lot in stairwells and that kind of thing because they, they have a flat edge on them there. Uh, angle irons you're certainly familiar with. This is an unequal leg. Uh, their other type is equal leg. <laughs> you know, they've got some standard shapes. These, the WTs and they're also STs, are simply uh, produced by cutting one of these sections in half. Um, I believe is how they do that. They just, and that's used then. These are very, con actually, um, manufactured separately, I mean not, not just cut, in, in this country I think they're all cut from a, a standard uh, W section. Uh, in Europe they have a special class that's called a T section and they're, they're special shapes, I mean they're not cut out there and they have a tapered, they can have a tapered, kind of like, well no not like this, they have a tapered flange here, uh, a tapered web, this part down here is tapered as well as sometimes the top but sometimes not. Uh, but we don't use those too much. Pipes, this, is, this shows you the difference. These are both four inch pipes. Uh, pipes um, come in actually several grades, but they're, uh, the most common, they're three. The, the standard, and then there's one I didn't show here is uh, extra strong, and this is double extra strong. And you see the, the s increase in, in weight. It's not to the, the outer diameter should be about the same. It, they just make it thicker, a thicker wall. So it stays at the same outer diameter, which should be nominally four inches, I think. And, and then the inner gets thicker with heavier. This is a, a structural tubing, uh, which also comes in you know, squares and shape like that, different tubing. Uh, so these are, I, I mean, there, there are other shapes in addition to these. Uh, and depending on the manufacturer, you know, they. They have different ones, but pretty generally, uh, they stick to, there are ASTM specifications for the sizes so that everybody's kind of on the same uh, page, different manufacturers, and, and um, you can pretty much pick them out of, out of design manuals. Like this is, this is the, a uh, um, little bit older version, but the um, um, steel manual. 
that has in the, in the front of it all the specifications and tables that describe all the different sizes, as well as design tables that we'll look at here in a second. Mm. Now these, you can start to see too that they're, uh, this is a good comparison because you can see some, some of the W section, well of any of the sections, but particularly the W sections are designed uh, with a beam in mind and some are, some are really intended to be columns. Uh, beam sizes, this is, this is a set of the, the beam sizes, it should be the same size there. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty neat. And they tend to have, tend to have uh, thinner, uh, thinner webs, a little bit thicker flanges, and, and narrow, you know, very deep. So this, would, this makes a structurally efficient uh, beam. You know, it would be very good for that. If you tried to, there's no law against using it as a column, but the reason it's not very suitable is because it has a very weak axis, right? It, it would be it's strong in buckling this way, but, but really disproportionately weak in this direction. Not that you couldn't brace it. It may be, you may actually use a, a section more like this if it were engaged in the wall, like that, that column there uh, is totally engaged in the block wall, so presumably the block would be enough to brace it, and it's not going to buckle sideways. It would buckle this way, so, you know, it could be, it would make sense that it would be a deeper section. You should check it out. Oh, it's probably the thickness of the, the block, though. That would make it more square. Uh, the other the column sections tend to be heavier. I mean, this is, this is, a, these are babies, but this one, this is a pretty, pretty common looking column size, they tend to be heavier and, and more squarish, you know, so that it has uh, a little bit evener, it's probably not exactly the same, but <laughs> pretty, pretty much pretty <laughs> closer uh, uh, radius of gyration or, uh, you know, tendency to buckle in either direction. Uh, you can see, I mean, this is a, what was this, a 10? Oh, okay, so this is a 12. This, yeah, this is even, is even deeper, but I mean, look at the difference, right? Between a column, this is intended to take a, a compression load versus, versus a flexure load um, for the same depth. And they, these can get, okay, this one's a little bit lighter. Yeah, and they, I mean, look at these two. These are both 12s. This is kind of an interesting comparison because normally, and it's usually true for all, most of the sections, the first uh, number here, this 30, is the nominal depth in inches. So this is 30 inches deep, approximately. It's, I mean, there's a range of them. You know, there may be, if you look in the, in the back of the book or look at a table that lists all the 30s, there may be 15 or 20 different 30 W30 sections. They're not all exactly 30 inches deep. They range, you know, maybe 30 and a half down to 29 and three quarters or whatever. I mean, there's a range. But on some of the heavier sections, there's even a, 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 a greater offset. These are both 12s, right? Yeah. So this, this is nominally, I think, pretty close to 12. This one, because the flanges are so thick, I mean, you, if the inner dimension is still 12, uh, but you can see they, they didn't measure it to the top of the flange. It's measured uh, not really to the bottom of the flange either, but somewhere in there. Um, so those are both W12 sections, but on the really thick ones, it's <laughs> not exactly nominally 12. It's probably 14 or something. I don't know what that is. But this is a, this is a beast of a section too. I mean. This, the second number is the weight, right? 336, oops, how do we get that one so high? Oh, I, I mixed them up. Sorry, I should have been comparing it to that one. Oh, oh, I screwed up, didn't I? This was a, th oh, okay, lied to you. These are all 14s, these are both 14s. Oh. But it's still, it still tends, you still see the difference. I should have a lighter 14 in there. You sure this one, are you sure this one wasn't 14? <laughs> really? <laughs> it must be written with invisible ink. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. 14 by, by uh, 132. 14. Uh-huh. Somebody, somebody got this one wrong. This is a 14. Okay, so I was doing it right. It just didn't have the right number up there. They're both 14s, not 12s. Anyway, uh, so look at this one. This is all three of these are 14s. Yeah, you, okay, you check it out. <laughs> huh? It is a 12. This one's a, this one's a 12. Oh, there we go. Okay, they go like this. Okay, I looked. All right, I read that one. And okay, all right, you had it right to begin with. Then twelve. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is a twelve. Uh -huh. Sorry. All right. Well, that's interesting, man. That's even. Was this what I held up? Yeah. Okay, I must be going crazy. All right, that's twelve. These are the fourteens. Anyway, look at this monster. This is. This would really be something. I, you'd say you'd maybe like a piece of a foot, maybe to, just to rest on the corner of your desk, but it's 730 pounds. This is the weight, 730 pounds per foot. So if you just had a piece of it a foot long, 730 pounds. Can you imagine? You couldn't even, no, you couldn't pick it up, could you? You couldn't even, both Matthew and I couldn't pick it up. The three of us couldn't pick it up. I, we'd have to get half the class there. Ugh. So that would be, so that, anyway, so that shows you the range. And you get a sense of the, the, uh, the difference then between the, so, so if somebody showed you this, you should be able to say, yeah, that's probably a column, versus somebody showing you this, you could probably say, yeah, that's probably a beam, uh, just based on the dimension, I mean, the distribution of the material. Uh, <clears throat> you can see, this was a uh, picture we found, too. Doesn't show it real well because of the angle, but this is definitely a square, more square piece here, and these are these are a little bit deeper the the uh, the beam pieces. You can see too what looks like stiffening there. That's hard. To, this isn't a very good picture to see the detail, but it looks like there's very often right where the connection comes together they'll stiffen the the flanges. There's a plates are welded in here. That's probably what he's doing. Looks like he's welding something welding this, this plate in here, maybe. Those stiffen it against uh, shear and also brace the, the flanges. Um, right. Now, yeah, we kind of brushed by this table, too. This is, this is of all the tables, the most fabulous. Ta Unfortunately, you're, you don't have a copy of it in Engel. It's really a pity. But this is the table that the steel manual produces to do, to do uh, beam design. And it is, it is one fabulous table. It is something you should get a copy of a steel manual just to peruse this table. It's not like it's just on one page. Look at this. Wait a minute. Let me, let me show you this. Here it goes. It starts on page 149, and it goes... This is all one table. It goes for pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. And what you've, what you've got, essentially, with each one of these pages, you have to imagine that there's this huge graph, right? And it obviously wouldn't fit in this little book. So they take these little windows, you know, uh, and, and break kind of like tiling it. And, and I always really wanted to take all those tiles and, and maybe Xerox it and scotch tape it all back together, which I started to do one time. But you can't really do it because every one of the, well, not every page, but a lot of the pages are at different scales. They're not, they, they just scaled it to what was uh, convenient to show because in some parts of the graph it's very dense and it's, you know, things are happening fast. And in some other parts it's, you know, there's a different scale to the way the curves are going, I guess the lower ones. And so you can't just, I mean, you could try with a Xerox machine trying to scale it in it, but that just, just does not work, I can tell you for sure, having tried it. it does, you never get it to work. So you never get these all, and, you, and I've never in my life anywhere seen this table as one sheet, just 
all together. And I think it would be a fabulous thing, I mean, don't you, to see that all is just one. Because what it does, it charts kind of the behavior history of, of every steel section. Here they all are. Each one of these is a different, a different uh, section, different shape. And it, and it plots its uh, capacity its moment capacity, here's the moment capacity, it plots it over, over extending lengths. So it starts, it starts <clears throat> at this end. Oh, oh, look, this is way at the, this like must be the last page. These are the babies, the dinky ones. Okay, starts down with, this is how closely it's braced. It could be the span, but it could, it, it's really not the span, it's how closely it's braced. So, because the bracing makes a big difference, right? If I have it, just braced on the ends, then there's a, there's a stability problem. It loses a lot of strength. Whereas if Matthew were to brace it in the middle, oh, this is strong. Just, just one hand there. Look, take your hand off. That's a strong hand. Look, look, <laughs> nothing. All right, put your hand back up. Oh! <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing difference. Oh! oh. So, and what happened there, I mean, we went from whatever, not quite four feet. As, as, you're, as you're going down this bracing, look, look what the strength does. Say, say we had this section here. Here at four feet, it only, only has a capacity of two and a half, whatever these are, moment, uh, kip feet. Well, okay, kip feet is, is actually something. But if you, if you put your hand in the middle of it at two feet, boom, it jumps up to, it doubles. It doubles in capacity. Just by, just by putting your hand there, well, maybe you have to be pretty strong, but you know, if you're like Matthew, uh, you could probably pull it off. And, and it doubles in capacity going from here to here in this one. Some of them, it's even, I mean, look, these are way down here at, at uh, 14 feet. It has this capacity. If I brace it, as I brace it, okay, brace it at 10 feet, brace it at 8 feet, brace it at... Four feet, watch, watch, you can see the history. This is a beautiful thing. Look at, there, you follow it. Oh, look, look, look. And then it hits this spot right here. That is, is a point, you know, we, we uh, talked about this on the board the other day. Um, I think, didn't we get, we did at least say this much about it Monday, that there are these um, levels that are reached Right, and that hollow dot there, that hollow dot is this point fully yields. Okay, so that would be uh, Fy, it yields, and you get a, a yield thing like that. So that's that, that's that little hollow dot. And, and some of them, there's not much of a range between it, but some of them, it's got quite a little, see this, it runs along like this. That should be, represent then uh, an allowable of 0 0.6. And if you go further, and you eventually you'd get to this full plastic case, this, this diagram that looks like that, right? And it's 10% more. It's an increased case. So it's got a higher, and this is, this is FY, right? And then the other ones, that, that, this represents the next plateau. See, see this one, hey, come on, where is this thing? Okay, this one is, all right, on this one, it's pretty short. It's that plateau right there is this level. And then you go up to this one, you're hitting this plateau. So you should be able to take, see, this is in terms of stress, right? And this is in terms of moment. So, of course, the moment these plateaus are all occurring at different places, because why? Why is the moment all different? The stress is all the same? Different section modulus, right? Because it's all um, the moment up here uh, is equal to uh, the stress over uh, the section modulus, right? So, if I've got different varying uh, section moduli, then, then the moment is also going to change. That's why you see, even though this, 
this stress here uh, is, is a constant for those different plateaus. You fo follow what I'm talking about? Yeah, yes, no, yeah, maybe. We could do one just for fun. Uh, how about a W10? There it is. You see this W10? Okay, there, there it is. A W10 by 8. Is that, did I read that right? I did, uh, okay, W8 by, oh, it's this one. Oh, look, it's that one. It's this one. Look, okay. A W8 by 10. Okay, so what's the section modulus? Somebody's got to tell us this. Well, you could look at, there's a table in the back. Mm, there's probably a, there's probably a table on the next slide. Let's see. Um, you got to find an 8. Oh, there it is. 8 by 10. There it is. Okay, 7.81. 7 7.81. 7 really? Did I do that wrong? Right? So M... Oh, yeah, you did. I did. I should never do that. I always get that mixed up. I don't know why I cannot keep that in my head. Oh, you couldn't see it anyway. It was too high. So the, the moment <laughs> equals this times this. Okay, F, S. Okay. So if we want the moment, no, no. Let's, um, we've got the moment, right? Let's go back. We've got the moment. What's the moment on that? Where did, where's its thing? All right, right there. What is it? 15, and this is set. Oh, golly. It's a little, this is, it's two dots higher. So that must be 15, to, uh, each one's 0.25. So that's 15.25, 15, 15 and a half, 15. It's probably like 15.6. Uh, maybe you think? Yeah, I think. All right. So M is equal to 15.6 uh, kip feet. So if we wanted to calculate this, we could say 15.6, uh, get it into inches, divide out uh, 7.81, and that would equal what? 24. Wow, perfect. And what does, what does angle half the time give us for uh, allowable stress? 24 or 20. Yeah, 24. 24 would then be this. If you say, uh, if Fy is, say, 36, uh, then you'd get maybe uh, 23.76 or something like that. So it's about 24. So that's what, so when you see, see, it starts to come together, right? This little plateau, then, is this stress, which represents this. So it's this condition. So each one of these steps, I mean, this, these from the black dot back, that, that black dot length there, with that, that's telling you that if you had a, an 8 by 10 and you braced it at least every four feet on center. So if, sounds like my glass is breaking. So if I've got this 8 by 10 and it's, Every, every four feet, I have to brace it every four feet in order to develop uh, this, this full stress. If I, if I brace it longer than that, say I brace it, oh, I don't want to brace it four feet on center. It's just a nuisance. I brace it eight feet on center. Oh, well, if you brace it, look what happens. Oh, sorry. It's only going to have a capacity of that, maybe 11 or something, 10 and a half. Not, not nearly what it had, you know, much lower. Not 15, but down to 11. But, it, but it's a trade-off. Maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be that strong. Maybe that's enough for you. You know, if you could brace it up to here, this would be like uh, maybe four and a half feet. Then you'd get, you'd get that value. Then, then you'd be there. That would be the, is it 20? I think it was 20. Can't remember what it is. 30, 36 times 0.7. Oh, maybe that is an even 20. What is that? 
if this is 36. 21.6. 20, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I didn't think it was easy. Okay, so this would be 21.6 KSI. So that's for 36, grade 36 steel, and this would be the 23 or 24. All right, so, I mean, this is, and it's so, so easy to use this. Actually, I mean, okay, these are fairly easy to come by, these plateaus, but these equations, I mean, just look at those graceful curves. And look at this. This one's curving this way. This one's curving this way. This one's curving, first it curves that way, then it curves this way, then it curves that way. What's that tell you? Well, it tells you there are different equations governing those curves. I mean, it's not a matter of just one equation and slap, it's done. You've got to figure out, that, that's why this is a fairly complicated thing to actually calculate. There are, I think, three different equations to choose from, and they govern at different points, so you have to know, you have to do some calculations to see which of the three equations is governing, governing at which point along the beam, and it can be a fairly, uh, and, I mean, we don't really get to this with, with angle, but in the um, steel manual, this is that's why the steel manual's a little bit thicker than a chapter or two. Where is that thing on? See, they have this. Oh, that's compression members. Where is flexure? Oh, no. Oh, here it, oh my goodness, I had forgotten how complex this was. Look at this, this is, this is a whole page just describing which equation to use. And the equations are, are like two-thirds minus Fy times the, you know, L over RT squared over 500 and, uh, 1,530 times 10 to the third times CB, which you then have to calculate on the page. So, I mean, th just to get those equations, it, I mean, the, the stresses there for those uh, and the reason, the reason it's a little bit more complex is what? Because it's a stability problem. It's not just a simple P over A. It's not just simple, uh, this would be simple flexure. This is the M over S. I mean, that's not a very hard equation. M divided by S. <laughs> right? I mean, you could... You might get it upside down, you might get, all right. But it's, uh, there are not too many things to play with. But, but this, I mean, even, you've worked the buckling equation. Buckling's a little bit more complex. But this is even more complex than buckling because, because it's also, you know, there's a bracing issue going on and, oh my. Okay, so the moral of that is that, that these, uh, th these are really useful um, charts in that you can, can without working all the equations, you can immediately, uh, and even, even you as, as a, you know, maybe not putting your, your stamp on a steel drawing, but, but you, could, you could initially uh, get, find a range of sizes. You know, you could, you could kind of approximate what your capacity was and kind of approximate the kind of members. The other thing that's, that's interesting, look at some of these are dashed. The dashed ones, those are the, the actual equation values there, but the reason they're dashed is because they're, they would be a bad choice. They're trying to say, no, no, you don't want to really pick that one. You want to pick a more efficient one. Like if you come across, say you, were, say you had a bracing of eight and a, uh, a moment that you had to carry of 10. Okay, so you'd come eight and 10. Oh, it was a bad choice. Let's say six. Well, let's say, let's say you come out and you're right in here, whatever that is, 11 and six and something. And then that means all of these uh, would fail. These are not anything that's from that point, anything that's down this way would fail, would be inadequate. Anything that's this way passes. So if I go here, this one would pass. That's a 12 by 10.8. This one would pass. That's an M, miscellaneous section, 12 by 10. But this one also passes uh, a W8 by 10. And it, it's lighter than either of these two. It's lighter than the 10.8, certainly. I guess it's a little bit lighter than, than that 10 is nominal. So it, it should be the best section. You can go further than that. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from picking these sections, but these are all heavier. 13, 15, 12. So, so this is the first solid black line that you hit. 
is, is the, the best section for you, the best section for that uh, load right there. Yeah, neat, huh? That is, that is one incredible table. Well, it's not one. I wish it was one, but it's, it's an incredible table nonetheless. This is the, this is the table that's in, in our textbook, uh, and there's also a copy of this in the steel manual. This is also pretty useful. Uh, in a lot of cases, you do have it fully braced, and in that case, uh, you can design it. Uh, I think this is the way we did the one um, last time. Didn't we? Monday, we actually worked an example. And the, the one that you do on the, com on the computer problem is worked like this, that you um, either, either in analysis, you know, if you're, um, this would kind of be an analysis situation, I suppose, the actual stress is, is MC over I, which is the same as M over S, and you compare that to the allowable stress, and you make an assumption about the allowable stress. It's either, uh, this is for A36. There's also another grade steel. It's probably more common now, A50, or, or not, it's not A50. 50 KSI steel, it's got some other number, 500, and what is that called, do you know? I can never remember the name of it. That doesn't matter. Uh, but it's a 50 KSI steel. It is uh, stiffer but not quite as ductile. I guess it's ductile enough for construction. It's not brittle. Uh, it is mild steel. Uh, mild steel means it's got less carbon in it, right, I think. You know, when you have, like you have cast iron, it has, has a lot of carbon in it. Besides, you get it out of the ground, you met, and, and if you've ever dealt with something cast iron, oh, one time, I'll tell you my experience with cast iron, I had a pulley that was, was a cast iron pulley, and I was trying to get it off or on, I can't remember anymore, and I thought, well, it just needs a few taps, so I took a thinking very, <laughs> a brass hammer, you'd think, oh, it's soft, okay, and gave it a few taps, it wasn't going to move, and I gave it a good whack and broke it. <sighs> that was not a good thing, because then I didn't have the pulley, <laughs> and it was hard to replace, but, it, it breaks, it doesn't bend. You shatter it like it's made. You gotta think of cast iron as being stone almost. It's brittle. Um, you can't bang it around. I mean, it's not quite like stone. If you drop it, it does have a certain ductility, but not very much. And when you go through the, you know, you probably learned in, in back in grade school, maybe fifth grade or something, the Bessemer uh, process for producing steel, right? and you, you have it in this big tub, and you blast oxygen on it, and it, what you drive, all these sparks come out, and, that, and with that, I think the carbon, I think you're driving off carbon, if I remember it. I haven't thought about it really since fifth grade, but it seemed to me, I remember, that you, you're blowing off the carbon, and what you're left with is then the steel, a purer steel, it's gotten the impurities out of it, the impurity being carbon, and, and that uh, is, um, they call it milder. It has that ductility, uh, and it's, so, it's soft in terms of you can, it ductile, you know, you can bend it, and it won't shatter. So if I had had a steel pulley, and I'd banged on it with my hammer, I might have bent it. I'd be less likely to shatter it at any rate. This is, this is steel. Well, okay, a lot of things are steel. Hmm? Hey, these are not steel. <laughs> Um, right, so what were we getting to here? It seems like we were talking about something. These equations, probably. Okay, so these are the, these you could use as analysis if you wanted to find the stress level if you're uh, uh, given the, the shape here in the moment, or you could be given, uh, let's see if we can do this right, if multiply right, Fs would equal M, right? So that would uh, allow you to calculate the capacity uh, of it, that's kind of what, did we do that here? No, we calculated the moment. We could have, we had the capacity. Could have gone backwards and found that capacity, I guess. These are design equations. So this is a design equation, where you have the, the moment and the stress and you find S. And then once you have S, you go into this table. So we could have, I wonder if we could work this backwards. How much time do I got? I might have, I was gonna do a, I was gonna do an example. Should I do an example? Hmm. 
Let's see. Maybe I could. I could. Where'd my marker go? Oh, all right, all right. Let's do, let's do an example real quick, just to put some numbers to it. Say we had, say we had this, okay, and say this was uh, eight feet like that, and say it was, uh, had a, a P, and the P is five kips, and say we want to design this steel beam. If you make the assumption that it's, that it's braced, right, I mean, that, that it's braced all along here, that it's not going to fail in stability, then that gives you this FB, uh, and we could take that as, as this number. We'll take the, the high number, 23.7. Okay, you know the moment, right, probably in your head. 20? Whoa, good job. 20, which I guess is from PL over 4, which equals 20. Okay, kip feet. Okay, so we can calculate the SX, which would be, uh, what do we say then, FM, man, I'll always screw this up if I don't write it, F equals M over S, so that is, see, wrong, okay, M over F, don't memorize equations, it's a real bad habit. Um, 20, and you have to get it into uh, inches because this is this is uh, psi down here, right? Over 23.7. So what we come out with? I thought I wrote this down. 10.1, I think, which is in inches to the third. So what do you do with that? 10.1. What, huh? what are we trying to do? We're trying to pick a section. This is design. This is design. 10.1. Well, you got to come down the list until you hit 10. Whoops, too far. This one, you can, it's hard to tell, but these are bold, and they're in groups. So this whole group passes. This would, well, these would all pass. All these pass. But you want to go as far down as you get, you get smaller and smaller. This 10.9 is as close as we can get without going. If I go to 7.8, that's too small. That one would fail. Oh, oh, it fails. Okay, no, we got to go up to a 10 by 12. Okay, a 10 by 12 would do it. That would do a 10. So we could, you know, use then, oops, W10 by 12. Now, what if, what if I didn't want to brace it entirely like that? What if I say it's only braced at, say, uh, this point in the middle, that it's unbraced over 8 feet? The difference it makes, if it's, on, it's only got that, that uh, one brace point here, then it's not supported. The difference it makes is in this. Now you don't know that. And if that's, not, if, it's that, if that's not given to you, then you're really better off going back to the, the, this beautiful table. And now you see how valuable it is. If I pick the number that's on here, I hope I did. What's the moment here? 20. So, 20. There it is. OK, good. And, and 8 feet. So you've got to come up 8 feet, 20. There it is. That point. And if I go up right there, 12 by 16 is that one. That's a 12 by 16. So I'd have to use, if I only had it braced like that, I'd have to use a W 12 by 16. And that should be bigger, right? Hopefully bigger than what I had before. Because if I brace it, if I brace it more, then it better, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it will get smaller, right? If I brace it less, then it's more likely to, to buckle, huh? So to, to, to uh, withstand that, it has to be bigger. So, is it? Yes! 
it was a 10 by 12 and now it has to be a 12 by 16. So changing the bracing has that uh, much effect on, the, on the, the section size. The less braced it is, the bigger it has to be. So in terms of design, you can see right away, it's, unless, there, unless you really just can't do it, you would always want to brace it. You'd always want to have uh, somehow support for the beams um, so that they could be uh, more efficient sections. They'd be smaller. They wouldn't have to worry about the, the buckling. Well, okay, I guess um, I'll let you off a whole 30 seconds early.